I rarely do any videos on United People's TV to do with our rivals, but rarely do you see uh, Chelsea sack a man. That's a lie. You see Chelsea sack managers all the time, but rarely do you see someone sack so early as Thomas Tuchel after the news broke today that Chelsea have sacked him after what? Like seven games in charge. Apparently, it wasn't even to do with the 1-0 defeat to Dinamo Zagreb. It was an overall... Ugh, Chelsea. It couldn't have happened to a nicer football club. I'm reveling in the fact that what I'm seeing, and the reason I'm doing this video, the reason I want to speak about it, is because what I'm seeing at Chelsea is what I have seen at Manchester United for so long. A club run without strategy. A club overspending on the wrong players. And a club where there isn't a, co a coherent, matched-up thinking. And that's what's brought Chelsea into this mess. And for me, it serves as a massive warning and a massive reminder that this club, we have to truly go forward and we have to believe, truly believe in Eric Ten Hag. Because what's happened at Chelsea, we, I mean, you don't need me to explain it, but I will. Bob Bowley has come in, Chelsea's new owner for replacing Abramovich. And we know what happened under the Abramovich era. They, Abramovich came in and ruined the Premier League for everybody. Came in and Chelsea were freely spending, freely sacking. As soon as something went wrong in the first dip of form, they would sack a manager and bring a new manager in. That's exactly what Todd Bowley has done. But it comes after a summer where Chelsea have spent in excess of £250 million. £70 million on Wesley Fofana. £60 million on Mark Cucurella. £50 million on Raheem Sterling. 40, nearly £40 million on Kalidou Koulibaly in excess of 250 million yet seven games in he's been sacked by the new owner a new owner who for me looks like he wants to be part owner and part manager uh, obviously chelsea fans aren't particularly happy about this uh, the, the whole board has been sacked from petter check to is it Mourinho, granovsky bruce buck there's so many people who have left chelsea and i couldn't be happier because chelsea i told you it's chelsea and city who have come in and, and transformed the spending powers of clubs in the premier league and I hope it all goes spectacularly wrong for them in the way that it has. But the reason I want to do this video is not because I'm surprised about Chelsea sacking a manager. Look, they sack managers. They spend a ton of money sacking managers. But this, for me, draws massive, massive parallels to what happened for so many years at Manchester United under Ed Woodward and under the Glazers. Now, Ed Woodward was the stooge, right? It was the Glazers who were the owners, and they didn't really know what they were doing. So they gave this man free reign over the purse strings, free reign over choosing who we were going to sign, free reign over everything. And it dragged Manchester United into the mud as a football club. Now, I'm not saying that Thomas Tuchel was the be all and all. Obviously, he clashed with the owners. He wouldn't sack a manager this early if he didn't actually clash with the owners. The owner probably didn't like his comments. But you've got a man here, and the only person he's trusting with his money is himself. And the only person that the Glazers trusted their money with was Ed Woodward. And it was a massive, grievous mistake that has dragged Manchester United into this position. But the reason I'm doing this video is because for me, it serves as a massive, huge, stark reminder that we have to... It's not just about backing your manager X, Y, Z. What I'm witnessing now with Thomas Tuchel, with him being sacked by Chelsea, with Todd Bowley coming in and Chelsea's free reigning spend in the summer transfer window... And it was bonkers, wasn't it? Even on the last day, they tried to sign Edson Alvarez for 50 million. Then who was it they went after after that? Um, yeah, Dennis Zakaria, they got him instead. They, they just went mad. Aubameyang came in to be reunited <laughs> with Thomas Tuchel, only for Thomas Tuchel to be sacked like seven games later. Yeah, you're damn right I'm enjoying this. And Chelsea fans, if you're watching this, I apologise. But what I'm seeing is your club, the wheels have come off. And you're starting to look like Manchester United have looked like for the last few years. It's not about the fact that we didn't back our managers financially because we did. We, didn't, we, we spent a lot of money, but we spent it incorrectly. And now, it, for me, it, as I say, that Tuchel situation serves as a massive reminder for Manchester United that we've got to head and take our club forward in a different direction. Otherwise, we're just going to repeat the same mistakes that we've done in the past and the mistakes that Chelsea are now starting to make with their new owner taking too much control and the non-footballing the non -footballing people making footballing decisions. And the only thing you've got to look at is Chelsea's activity in the transfer market. It's absolutely bonkers and overpriced, ridiculous. And I'm loving it, absolutely loving it. But Manchester United this summer, we overspent. 
but we overspent with a strategy. And that's the big bit. That, that, that is the big difference between Chelsea spending this summer and Manchester United spending this summer. Because look, on paper, we spent 200 million overall if you look at the net spend. And Chelsea spent, well, near enough, 200 million overall in terms of the net spend. But we did it with purpose. We did it with a strategy. We overpaid for Anthony, but Anthony was the number one signing, bringing Eric Ten Hag back for the reunion. Casemiro was the one down there, I would say, is a bit of a, that was the pivot point. That should have been Frankie de Jong for around about the same amount of money, but it wasn't. And we pivoted away from him, and he's not even really played yet for Manchester United. Let's see how he gets on across the course of the season. Lissandro Martinez has come in alongside Malasia and transformed Manchester United's defence because they are playing Ten Hag's football. Now, Ten Hag for me is just like the bastion of hope, if you want to call him that. After watching my football club operate like Chelsea are operating now. An absolute mess. A catastrophe. An owner who doesn't really know what the right things are for that football club. And an owner who clearly is going to be having a very hands-on owner. I mean, if Graham Potter comes in and has a bad runner form, we're probably just going to boot him out of the club anyway. But Eric Ten Hag is a man that I trust, that I feel has a as a grasp and a clarity on where he wants to be in three years' time, where he wants to be in two years' time, where he wants to be at the end of the season in five years' time. And that concept of long-term planning has just been a foreign language to our football club for so long. And that's why we've been stuck in a rut. That's why we've been stuck in a mess, because we've had Ed Woodward in control of footballing decisions. We've had the Glazers inter interfering and interrupting. And uh, if, if reports are be, uh, to be proved correct, they were interfering in the whole Ronaldo situation this summer. But Eric Ten Hag is a man that we can trust to take us forward. And it's just, as I said, for me, what's happened with Thomas Tuchel, it seems reactionary, but it feels like Chelsea. I'm not surprised that they sacked him. I'm not surprised that Bowley's gone, no, I, no, we need someone else in. And I won't be surprised if whoever comes in to replace him massively struggles with a squad which is full of players that were brought in with, not, with no coherent strategy. The names are there, the prices are there, but... I mean, that they really signed them for any particular reason? I don't know. As I say, it's a, very, it's a bit odd for me to do a video reacting to something that happens to one of our rivals. But having watched my club just be the laughing stock, be the club that everyone points towards and goes, you know what, that's how you don't run a football club. I take great pleasure in the fact that Manchester United is now not the place where you point that finger. Chelsea is the place where that finger is going to be pointed this season because their new owner has come in with a ton of money and doesn't really know what to do with it. But Manchester United, we've got an opportunity. Let's just ignore everything. That, well, not ignore everything, but let's just... Let's stay on this path. that we, this, this feels like we're treading down a different path. I know that path that Chelsea are going down now. And, I, it, it, and it dragged so much ambition and life out of our football club. But under Eric Ten Hag, I'm not just talking about the four wins now. I'm not just talking about the current circumstances. This summer... I agreed with the signings we made. I feel like they all settled in. And the fact that they've all settled in so quickly and are making an impact and a difference on this team straight away goes to show that there was a, a linked up strategy and thought process be behind those players coming in. And that Eric Ten Hag, now that he's got across to the players and he's got that collectiveness. And for me, I will go back to it. I will go back to that point after the Brentford game where Ten Hag did the 13 and a half kilometer run with the players. That collectiveness. I know you're at fault, but I'm at fault too. Ride or die together. And that feels like something different at United that we haven't seen for a while. As I said, I'm used to our club doing mad shit like this. I'm used to our club owners being bad owners. And I'm used to our club spending freely in the market, but not really hitting too many bullseyes. That's why this summer is different. That's why I want us to just use this as a stark reminder of where we have been recently for a long time. And the owners that we still need to get rid of because as Chelsea and, and Boley are showing now, you get the wrong owners into your football club, they can fucking ruin it. And the Glazers have tried their best to ruin Manchester United. But in Eric Ten Hag, there's a man that I trust to take us in the right direction. That's why I wanted to do this video. I hope it all goes wrong for Chelsea. I hope they don't manage to get Graham Potter in. I think he's a decent manager. I hope they get someone else in and he gets sacked as well. But revel in it. And just remember where we were as a football club and remember that I think... In my opinion, Eric Ten Hag is the man to steer us forward in the direction that we need to be in. Because I don't want to be doing what Chelsea are doing. I've had enough of that. I'm bored of that. I want something new. Ten Hag is the man for that.